W1VLF. So here's a couple of uh, still shots that I wanted to show you that probably have a, a little better resolution. You can see the circuit board, um, just run-of-the-mill copper uh, plated circuit board, the three inductors, and then the uh, capacitors, the BNC connectors on each end. Nothing special going on here, but I just wanted to show you a little bit higher resolution picture. This is a straight on shot. Um, you can see the three slugs inside the variable uh, inductors. I c you could use uh, fixed molded inductors too. Absolutely, I've made a lot of filters using those. I just happen to have these on hand and it was nice to be able to put them on the uh, inductance meter and tune them to the exact value that the program uh, called for. So the next slide up here is the actual schematic. Um, you can see that there are uh, four capacitors and three inductors. Um, if you look at the first capacitor, you can see the program predicts um, 816 picofarads. The next standard value is 820. Uh, 571 picofarads, standard capacitor value is 560. So easily you can go to standard values and make this filter work just as well as, as what you're going to see later on as I show you the uh, filter plot. The inductors, um, the, f the uh, program calls for four microhenries. Um, 3.9 is a um, standardized value, so those are easy to come by as well. Molded inductors, no problem. The uh, left side of the schematic shows a 50 ohm generator, which in this case is your antenna. And the right side shows a 50 ohm load, in which, in this case, it's your uh, SDR. This, this is not super critical. I don't know what the input impedance of the SDR is uh, precisely across all these frequencies, but it's not critical. Um, the filter works fantastic, as you'll see here coming up. If you're going to look at the swept response of a filter, the first thing you need to do with your analyzer, your vector analyzer, is to calibrate it. Um, you're going to see uh, that on the left-hand side of the screen, um, down at the bottom, it says start at 100 kilohertz. It also, uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, stops at, uh, at uh, 30 megahertz. So the swept response that you're going to see here is across that frequency band. There's a couple of markers up there. One of them uh, is at uh, 1850, marker 1, marker 2 is at 1750, and marker 3 is at 1300 kilohertz. Uh, when we go to the next slide that actually shows the filter response in, in, over, you know, in place, um, you'll be able to see why, why I put those in there. Um, and the vertical scale is in, is in uh, dB, 10 dB, minus 30 dB, uh, and so on. So I guess you could say this is the uh, meat of the program. This shows the swept response of the filter. Um, if you uh, look on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that the filter ultimately uh, has around 70 dB of attenuation. Um, the passband ripple, all you know, is maybe or actually the insertion loss. It looks like about uh, a dB or so, half a dB, and then there's a little bit of ripple uh, over by marker number one, which is at 1850 kilohertz. Th the signals from the 160 meter dipole are so strong uh, on 160 meters that uh, a couple of dB of insertion loss is not a problem. Uh, but if you look at 1750 kilohertz, we're already down by uh, roughly 11 and a quarter dB. Marker 3 uh, is down by uh, 42 dB. And I'm looking in the upper right hand corner of the map of, of the uh, chart here uh, for these. And as you go further and further deeper into the AM broadcast band. So uh, that's a huge reduction in input power to the front end of the SDR. Um, this is what the filter looks like actually being swept. The, the actual filter that um, you saw in the pictures uh, did this just a couple minutes before I started making the video. One last look at the filter before we head over to the ham shack and take a look at the SDR2 Play running uh, console version 3 and see what effects the filter has compared to the internal filter. 
uh, in the uh, receiver itself. So here goes. Okay, so we're over here at the ham station now looking at one of the monitors. The SDR2 play is connected, the 160 meter dipole is connected, and I have my, um, the high pass filter installed. If you look on the left hand side of the screen, you can see some of the AM broadcast carriers are there, and as the filter rolls off, so uh, note uh, a couple of things here. One, let's let's do this. Let's roll this down. Let's move the uh, waterfall down a little bit so you can see pretty much just the carriers. And uh, there's some pretty good signals in there. Let me uh, let me unmute it. Drive all. Okay. There's a couple of guys talking there. So I'm going to disconnect the filter or switch it out using the transfer relay here. And the antenna will be going directly in now. Here goes. Okay. So as you can see, there is a ton of AM broadcast carriers every 10 kilohertz. We switch it back out again. Okay. Uh, you have to pardon the, the lightning noise in here. So I'm going to take the filter out. The filter is in right now. I'm going to take out the seven pole filter and I'm going to turn on the internal um, notch filter up here, the AM FM notch. So here goes. I'm going to switch the filter off and then I'm going to put the internal filter on. Okay. So, okay. So you can see there's still uh, an awful lot of um, AM broadcast interference there. I'm going to uh, turn that filter off again so you can see the, f the full effect. So that's the antenna directly in. That's the internal filter in the uh, SDR play, and now I'm going to engage the uh, outboard filter. And you can see what a dramatic difference that is. Uh, now we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to go up here and show mostly just the waterfall now. Let me disconnect the filter again. Uh, and take off the notch. Okay, so every one of these little lines is another one of those AM broadcast carriers. And here we go. We're going to engage the uh, outboard filter again. You can pretty dramatically see what happens. So I'm going to turn it back on. The filter is off again, and now we'll turn on the internal notch. And the internal notch does help quite a bit. Let me turn this. Let me mute these uh, guys for a second here. The internal notch helps significantly, but when you put on the outboard filter, that seven-pole filter. Here we go. Um, dramatically uh, reduces, especially look if you can see all these AM carriers have dropped significantly and the only thing left is the uh, actual signals. So I think that's all I'm going to have for tonight. Um, we can do the same thing with another type of filter, a low pass, if you were interested in say long wave DXing um, the AM broadcast band also gets in the way there. Um, that filter would be a low pass filter and would allow everything from about 10 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz in, through and then it would uh, roll off very steeply and get rid of the AM broadcast band there as well. I guess alright one more time I'll turn it on one more time. Let me turn off the internal notch that's in there again. Okay so the internal filter is off and you only have the seven pole filter on the, and here we go so that's wide open the 160 meter antenna definitely directly connected to the receiver and if I switch that off or excuse me switch the, the uh, filter in you can see the dramatic difference that it makes in. Delta Alpha. So I can hear. This guy is pretty strong. Okay. Well, you're at the last. But you can see how he's getting buried in. Some weaker stations, you would just not be able to hear with all the interference. There we go. Victor Juliet and our TV. So I guess that's it for now. All right. Well, that.
This is W1VLF signing off from the uh, ham shack. 73. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, I'm still new at this, so I apologize if there were some uh, inconsistencies or the audio wasn't so great. Thanks an awful lot for watching, and please uh, comment and subscribe, and stay tuned for uh, more videos.